Some of the gear that was just the sole, solely the purvey of big budget films is now available for us, for everyday filmmakers, for people who can, you know, go out with a DSLR camera, go out with a mobile phone, and you can get that cinematic look uh, from your camera using anamorphic lenses because they're now no longer three, four, five, ten, twenty, sixty thousand pounds or dollars per lens. You can get them now for your mobile phone for like one hundred and forty-nine dollars or one hundred and twenty-nine pounds. You can get them for your camera, your DSLR camera now for like five hundred pounds, five, six hundred dollars. They're, they're they're just available for you to use. There are a couple of ways that we can actually de-squeeze this footage so you don't look like that. And you can make sure that everything fits the frame and everything looks right and you get those black bars when you're watching it on TV and all that kind of stuff. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to dive into Premiere Pro and we're going to see how we do that inside Premiere Pro, how we get it de-squeezed. So, let's jump in and see what we do. So, now that we're into Premiere Pro, what we've got is we've got our footage here, which is uh, squeezed footage effectively. So, this has been shot on an anamorphic lens, actually an anamorphic lens for a mobile phone. Um, so, what we can do is we can drag and drop this footage into our timeline and we can see that it's still squeezed. So what we have to do is we have to do specific things to it to get it to change the timeline to be the right aspect ratio for the footage so that it fits in correctly and uh, it looks like it should look. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that for the minute. We're going to go over to our uh, project window here. We're going to click on the anamorphic footage. So we've got that footage, this, the clip that we're actually wanting to use. We're going to right click on it. Then we're going to go up to modify and we're going to go to interpret footage. Now, in interpret footage, we're going to drop to the aspect ratio, so pixel aspect ratio. We're going to click on conform to, and then we're going to come down to HD anamorphic 1333. And that's because I used a one times, a times 1.33 anamorphic lens. So when I click on that and I click OK, you can see it's instantly changed in the window to be anamorphic. Um, so it's got a much wider view now. It's no longer... Uh, squished and when we drag it and drop it into our timeline uh, we can uh, keep the existing settings and it hasn't changed it so I need to do that all again yeah <clears throat> start again So now that we're in, uh, uh, so now that we're in Premiere Pro, we've got our footage in our uh, project window, and we've got it on our source window as well. So we've got a clip that we're going to use, uh, and if we drag that footage into our timeline, we can see that it is still squished. We can see here that the car is still not quite the right shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that, and we're going to come across to our project window, click on it. Click on the footage that we want to interpret or want to change. We're going to go up to uh, right click and go up to modify. And then we're going to go to interpret footage. We're then going to go to pixel aspect ratio and click conform. And then we're going to use the drop down box to select what we want to do with it. What we actually want to do is want to go to HD or, or anamorphic 1080 1.33. And that's because I used an anamorphic lens for a mobile phone which was a, a times 1.33 anamorphic lens. So we're going to click on that and then we're going to click OK and you can instantly see it's changed the aspect ratio in our window here. So we can then grab and drag it, drop it on there and we can change the sequence settings and we've now got our footage as an anamorphic uh, aspect ratio. So we've got that ultra wide look and we've got this beautiful horizontal lens uh, flares that we've got going off here. Uh, and as you can see, the car is now no longer squished anymore. It's now the correct aspect ratio. There are another. There is another way of doing that. 
Um, so what we can do is we can come to uh, our footage. Um, so we can go up to uh, sequence settings, go to sequence settings like so. Uh, so we can change the whole sequence settings itself. Uh, and what we need to do is we need to change the sequence settings to match what the um, what the aspect ratio of the footage is. So for that, I'm just going to get the cal cal calculator up. So we'll just get the calculator up. Here we are. And this just involves a little bit of maths. So we're going to use the horizontal uh, frame. We're not using the vertical frame because we want to keep it at 1080. Um, we just need the horizontal because it's a lot wider. It's filmed at 1080, but it's filmed a lot wider on this end. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, sequence settings by typing in 1920 and then we're going to times that by the focal range of our anamorphic lens. So in my case it's 1.33, so it's times 1.33. That gives us 25536. So we'll do it at 2554. So if we get highlight that, 2554, click OK. And you can see that the timeline has now changed to that aspect ratio. And then we can grab and drag our footage and we can uh, add that straight in. And then basically that just adds it straight in there. We're going to change the settings to match and they match perfectly. And that's absolutely spot on. There is a different way of doing that. So that's changed the settings to match those. If I just come out of that altogether and we go back, what I can do is I can... Um, do the same thing again. So we go to sequence settings and we'll stick in our 2554. Click OK. And then when I click and I drag that into our timeline and I keep the existing settings, you can see it stays as it is from there. Um, and that's basically uh, an easy way of doing it using a bit of maths. If we have not conformed this footage at all, so we'll just do that as it is now and we'll go up to the sequence settings and we'll change that to 2554 because we know we've done our maths already so we've got two different we've not conformed the footage at all and we click dr and drag our footage in and we keep existing settings you can see it moves into the middle and we've got black bars the left and right what we can do is we can still alter that footage to match so we can de-squeeze it manually so what we do is click on this on the clip go up to effects controls and then we um go to the scale we're going to uncheck uniform scale so we want scale width here we don't need scale height we want scale width and then from this point on what we can do is we can then just drag the slider across uh, and it will automatically do both sides and then you can just make it fit the frame that you've got and that will then allow you to manually de-squeeze your footage such a great great technique and it's such a brilliant medium to film on it gives you footage just that that real cinematic look you can of course fake it by sticking black bars across the top and the bottom of your your um, uh, uh, 16 by 9 footage but you're never going to quite get that beautiful horizontal flare um, you're never going to quite get that that really wide field of view that you do get with an anamorphic lens um, it is such, such a great tool to have uh, and it's such a great technique to be able to just bash it straight into a timeline and conform it so that it fits and it looks absolutely spot on. You're not trying to get it right by squeezing it left and right to try and make sure you've got it exactly how you want it to get it by extending the clip out. You can do that, but the fact of the matter is, is it does do some of the work for you. So with that, I hope you found it useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.